Uh, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Ali, uh, I'm from uh, Lilypad, uh, co-founder and CEO. This is a project that's being incubated at Protocol Labs though, uh, which is why you might have seen me at Filecoin and Protocol Labs events. Um, so we're currently uh, incubating and building this out at Protocol Labs as well. Uh, really great to be here actually. Fun fact, uh, back in 2020, I think Chainlink Conference 2020 was one of my first ever crypto conferences that I went to. It was COVID, so it was all online, and as an Australian, I could actually attend. <laughs> so I uh, got to meet like some of the gang back then, and now I'm actually talking here, so uh, pretty cool. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, so what is Lilypad? What is this verifiable, trustless, decentralized compute? There's a lot of big words in there. Why do I think it's the now frontier for Web3? And why am I shoving AI and ML onto another slide? We've probably had enough of hearing those words. But there's actually a reason for this, uh, and hopefully uh, you'll see that by the end of this chat. Um, so verifiable compute is kind of a core need. It's one of the three components of the modern internet. Uh, but at the moment, uh, it's kind of, compute has kind of been a missing piece of the decentralized kind of internet story. Um, so there's a few, with a few experimental um, kind of exceptions along the way, and that's likely for two reasons. One, it's complex. Building decentralized compute that's verifiable is complex, uh, and the research is only, is kind of still bleeding edge, but catching up now. Secondly, I think as a space, uh, we just weren't quite ready yet, and there was more pressing problems to solve, like some of the things that we've seen this morning. Um, you know, account abstraction, a big one. I'd like to be able to use uh, or, or send this compute or AI and ML compute model that we're building to, um, you know, everyone. We want mainstream adoption. Um, so we're starting to see the results of some of these discussions in the space like come out, like the account abstraction piece has come out, uh, ZK uh, proofs have come out now, all that sort of thing is finally catching up. Of course, uh, I've worked for Filecoin, so uh, decentralized compute, uh, sorry, decentralized storage is also now available as well. Um, so I think now we're ready. We're ready for verifiable compute. It's the now frontier of Web3, and it's going to enable us to actually, we've heard a lot about bringing the next billion users to Web3, and the UX story is part of that, but what about being able to do stuff with our data? Like I said, it's one of the core pillars of the internet. Uh, so we want to be able to do that where it doesn't actually connect to just another AWS service. Um, so that's what I'm aiming, we're aiming to do here at Lilypad. We're trying to create this project uh, of verifiable trustless computation, uh, like this internet scale, and can allow for these mainstream Web3 applications to use it. Uh, so um, we want to unlock these uh, new data economies as well. And as Kryptonians, I don't know, is that a word? I just made it up. Um, <laughs> we also are highly native to running our own nodes as well. So why not be rewarded for your spare GPU being used by a project like this as well? Um, so we're hoping this is a space that the LilyPad network can play a big part of. Um, so our vision is to build this internet scale uh, kind of distributed compute network that enables internet scale data processing, so not just AI and ML, but those are big parts of it, especially with the mainstream adoption we're seeing, and other arbitrary computation from blockchains while unleashing idle processing power and unlocking this new wave of data economies. Um, so in practical terms, Lilypad offers kind of three main things, a global trustless permissionless compute network with an independent global marketplace of GPUs. So we're basically running a two-sided marketplace, which we want to do in crypto. We want to get rid of the middleman, we want prices to stay low, we want things to be accessible, which is the next point. We want it to be accessible to everyone on the same terms. Uh, so it's permissionless. And thirdly, we want to use this distributed hardware network with inbuilt cryptographic trust mechanisms. So off-chain, large-scale compute with on-chain guarantees which is, you know, probably a lot of parallels with Chainlink here, which is great. <laughs> uh, so why not AWS, though? Why aren't we using that? Why do we need this? Um, I probably don't need to tell you all. You can probably guess already. But it's not just a buzzword. Uh, like with AI and ML reaching the kind of mainstream adoption curve, uh, first with kind of generative AI images and now with LLMs uh, like ChatGPT, um, there's several kind of practical as well as ethical challenges that are arising here. So some of these are uniquely suited to a decentralized compute solution like Lilypad. 
And these kind of include ownerships of AI, ownership sorry, of AI models, access to AI models, and hardware to train the models, and security and speed to innovation through open source projects. So I'll expand a little on some of those. Firstly, the capability for decentralized AI with distributed uh, networks like Lilypad is one of the major ideological whys, and it's a driver for me personally. So. We've all heard this story before, being in this Web3 community. Uh, it bears repeating here, though. In the same way that one person should not control access to social media or one co company shouldn't control access to your data or scientific breakthroughs, central entities probably should not be allowed to control access to AI advancements or then lobby for how those should be used. Um, along the way. So currently both the models and our access to them are either a black box or rate limited or there's kind of other questions surrounding that. Uh, so that's one reason that networks like these are going to be important in the future. And what's also interesting to add to that point though is I don't know if anyone's read this article. Um, so this was like a leaked Google article um, about how they have no moat and neither does open AI. And basically what it says is that Open source models are faster, they're more customizable, they're more private, and they're more capable. Um, so that means opening up access to AI gives a better pathway to innovation. It also reduces biases because we aren't just like relying on um, an algorithm created by one of these companies, which are generally American companies. No offense to Americans, but you know what I mean. Um, and, <laughs> you know, uh, we're opening up access instead uh, for open innovation, and that means also that people can get there quicker because they know what their use case is. They know what they need. One of the big problems here, though, for being able to innovate in the AI space is access to GPUs at a reasonable price. I don't know if anyone's tried to use a GPU lately on one of the main centralized services. They're really hard to get to and they're really expensive anyway. Um, so DeepIn, or Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks, uh, and one of those is Filecoin, uh, can help solve this with kind of an open compute network. So leveraging these networks and connecting them to a legitimate uh, uh, front end and code uh, protocol base, really, uh, can help us uh, solve this kind of practical problem of access to GPUs. Um, this should, given it's a two-sided marketplace, also be good for efficiency and pricing. So aligning this supply and, aligning this supply and demand uh, by providing these GPUs and new revenue streams to the other side of that as well. So oligopolies don't make for efficient use of hardware and they don't provide good pricing models for users. Um, this is another great point. I don't know if anyone knows Brooklyn Zelenka or the Fission team, um, but she's an amazing CTO there. Uh, she also made the point that if you look at these large cloud providers, their data centers are really in two main places, almost entirely, and there's not data centers anywhere else. So I think uh, this, this kind of distribution model needs to be looked at as well. Uh, so a quick recap on some of my points. Uh, hopefully I'm not all ideology here. There's actually some real practical use case reasons, which I think the team before was very uh, adamant about having a real use case. I think there's some real use case reasons uh, for this decentralized compute network, as well as some uh, kind of ideological uh, solutions that I think are very important as well. Um, so we've probably heard a lot about AI and blockchain recently. There's, uh, you know, Web3 is really good at unlocking network effects, eliminating these middlemen, and creating peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks. So this is what we can bring to Web3 and Web2 developers, mainstream developers. So cheaper, more open, better distributed, and more efficient compute power combined with kind of this transparency and data ownership. And having a stake in the ownership of AI uh, solutions as well. There's also a security point there, which I think, I don't know if anyone was at Alison uh, Jutman's, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, uh, talk this morning, but uh, yeah, it was really good, right? She was talking all about uh, security and the need for more people to be able to look at this as well. Uh, so these are some of the things that we can do uh, that a Web3 is uniquely capable of helping AI with, uh, and there's definitely AI problems cropping up. Um, so we can create open source community ownership here. 
Uh, we, you know, we can create proof of humanity and provenance, and I think we're already seeing projects doing that as well. Uh, and there's also attribution models. So uh, crypto as a payments layer is incredibly efficient. Uh, so we can use it for things like giving attribution to the original content creators. And this is a proof of concept uh, project we did uh, with Lilypad, hence the name Water Lily, which basically takes uh, artists' input data, uh, trains it, so it does a LoRa training model on it, and then a user can go ahead, type in their prompt, pay a small amount of uh, money and get their uh, images back. This is on an old uh, stable diffusion model. That's why the images don't look as good as the new ones do, uh, which you'll be able to see. Uh, <laughs> well, you can try it out, actually. It's all live. Um, I don't think I've got any pictures in this slide, though. Um, anyway, so our roadmap, uh, we've just released Lilypad V2, which has a lot of updated models. Uh, we intend to go multi-chain as well. We're EVM compatible, so anything EVM we can run on. Um, we're going to release an incentivized testnet as well uh, for supplies, so if anyone's interested in that, please hit me up. Uh, and mainnet launch next year. Okay. Uh, there we go. Um, we just did, a uh, whole team did a talk on everything we're, we're uh, doing at Lilypad as well. So if you want to know more, uh, you can have a look at Phil Dev Summit uh, and uh, have a look at those talks. Sorry, that's an old picture. It was meant to be Sal Salvador uh, Dali picture of Barcelona, which is really kind of weird. Um, but this one's from Iceland, so hence the aurora. OK, thank you, everyone. Uh, open, open to questions if anyone has any, otherwise. Try it out. N one question. Sorry, no questions. <laughs> I'll take one, though. Sure. Uh, I just want to verify a little confusion uh, Yes, there's a whole uh, research paper on that, so maybe I'll just give you the link to that because I'm getting like yeah, the. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. Hello. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Quick if, question. If you have a look in our docs, there's, oh, there's a quick question up there, too. Hey, yeah. Hey. So, uh, how the uh, participants are incentivized? Do, do you have uh, kind of your token uh, that yeah, uh, you yeah, use to exactly. compensate those who, who are uh, in this calculation like network? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, on the mm -hmm. supply side, uh, the node side, they are compensated with LP tokens. Currently, we're only at testnet, though, so those are pretty worthless, but we are tracking. Uh, all participants on the network for the future launch. Oh, cool. Uh, and so on there the is a network of GPU and also, I guess, CPU, like uh, mostly, instances, right? Mostly GPUs at the moment, um, and yeah, mostly GPUs that we're using because we're focusing most of our modules or jobs are around AI and ML at the moment, mm -hmm. so LoRa training or infants training, um, yeah. And when you s say that uh, it's EVM compatible, we mean that you have uh, also some contracts and the, the, the tasks that uh, we have from our contract, we can uh, put it through the contract directly yeah, on-chain. You can directly yeah, run get, from a smart get contract. Get results calculated then also like... Yep, you can, so get, it's working you, yep, you can run this in as a an clean, oracle, yes, yep, I, or from ah, a Solidity uh, contract. The oracle part is... Uh, Provided it's, by it's Chainlink, yeah? I mean, no, it's not quite an oracle. Uh, I'm kind of hoping in future we might be able to use CCIP as a messenger mm -hmm. between our multi-chains, actually. Um, that's probably one of the ways I'd integrate. Um, but we're currently, yeah, it, there's, no, there's no Chainlink. Cool, great, <laughs> thank you. I'm asking because in the next version of what we are doing, mm. we will need scoring. Okay. That uh, has to be calculated off-chain in ML models and then uh, recorded Exactly. So this would be completely useful for, for that, people. and it would be highly compatible with being put with either ZK models, like to do the computation, mm -hmm. or with oracles cool. um, Thank to you. help do computation. So yeah, great Thank use you. case. Thank you. <laughs>